Some of the distinguished speakers here today will no doubt be addressing the issue of Mr. Lee's role in Singapore's diplomacy and how he enlarged Singapore's international space. I will not cover this ground in my remarks, but I want to make an observation relating to it. When Mr. Lee created this space for Singapore, he was very clear in pointing out to the big powers that Singapore was different from them and from others. He made clear that we had our own system, we would be no one's lackey, and we would be accepted on those terms. Let me recount for you an incident from an earlier era which reinforced this conviction and left a deep impression on me. It occurred during Mr. Lee's first official visit to China in 1976. During a meeting with the Chinese Premier, Hua Kofeng, Mr. Lee was presented by Mr. Hua with a copy of a book by an Australian academic, Neville Maxwell, on the Sino-Indian War of 1962. Premier Hua Kofeng presented the book telling Mr. Lee that, and I quote him, this is the correct version of the India-China war. I was sitting quite close to the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Rajaratnam, perhaps in the row just behind them. When Mr. Lee took the book, he looked at the front cover and looked at the back cover and then handed it back to Premier Hua and saying, Mr. Prime Minister, this is your version of the war. There is another version, the Indian version. And in any case, I am from Southeast Asia. It is nothing to do with us. Prime Minister Hua Kofeng showed no reaction, but a silence fell in the room. Mrs. Chao Kuan Hua, the wife of the foreign minister, an important functionary of the Chinese side at that time, got up and walked away. Her husband, Foreign Minister Chao Kuan Hua, the Chinese foreign minister, who was some seats away in the same row, was seen abruptly putting away the paper he was holding in his hand. I may be exaggerating if he showed a sign of displeasure. There was a silence for a while and the conversations resumed. The response by Mr. Lee touched me immensely. Before the meeting, for two, three days, we had all been shown the sights of Beijing to impress us of the greatness of China and her past. To do such a thing at that first official meeting with another leader of Chinese origin was something no one could have expected. I was moved by the way Mr. Lee handed back the book and what he said. This confirmed to me that he might be ethnically Chinese but was not subordinate to China. Even to this day, I sometimes get asked about this incident by people who cannot bring themselves to believe that the Prime Minister of a small country like Singapore would have dared to incur Chinese displeasure by such a manner of response.